All right, guys, here we go. Chapter 11, Services Marketing. Um, look, I'm mainly interested in services marketing from the perspective that a lot of you are going to work in the service sector. Um, a lot of the growth in our economy prior to current situations was in services. I just want to show you the key terminology here. A lot of the videos that I have uploaded will explain key concepts. Uh, they spend a lot of pages explaining very simple concepts here. I'm just going to get straight to the key point and just explain what matters, what doesn't. So, yeah, the first point, I think all of us appreciate the service sector to the Australian and New Zealand economies contributes a great deal. Um, all right, again, well, le key learning objectives, service dominant economies. Um, I think, yeah, you're looking at, um, yeah, tourism in particular. Yeah, you've got it here, 70% of what we do um is really based around services right nothing exciting hairdressing restaurants all of these okay we get it here are a couple of definitions obviously service of products by number of unique characteristics well you can't touch a service again it's a classic multiple choice question service is the act of delivering a product whether it's a good or service product big deal right we get it Service dominant logic was um, Vargo and Lush came out and I had to read, I'm not kidding, like 40 papers saying that everything is predominantly a service, um, that it's all about providing value and it's value in use. I will never ask you a question on service dominant logic. Um, I spoke to a few professors I knew from <laughs> University of New South Wales, who I said, what's the go with all this? And they went, guys, they're just repackaging, and Vargan and Lush admit it themselves, an old concept. Um, this is your traditional approach to services marketing in this chapter. Um, when you get into second year and do services marketing the subject, you get a lot more detail. It's a really good subject. Now, classifications, guys, look, these are just definitions. Business to business services, wow, exciting, not. Um, but that's where you could be working. Now, this here, the services marketing mix, the characteristics, uh, the classic multiple choice question. It's the first one I look at. Um, if it's not in your exam, I'll be surprised. Intangibility, well, gee, really, you can't touch it. Exciting plus. Um, but, yeah, what are strategies that we can use to eliminate um, uncertainty, well, tangible clues, logos, staff, um, the Hilton Hotel, Qantas Airlines, um, uniforms. Again, you know, perceived risks still exist when you're buying stuff and they use service guarantees. We guarantee you'll get this, you'll get your money back or you'll get a discount. Testimonials, all of these things are designed to make you feel more comfortable. Um, Travago, Expedia, TripAdvisor, all of these use customer service evaluations to give you a sense of um, safety when you're buying a product or booking it, service. Inseparability, well guys, gee, this is great. You're at a hairdresser, well you can't really have a service without the hairdresser. Um, yeah, 14 pages to explain that concept. Heterogene, heterogeneity. Services are provided by humans who, unlike machines, are subject to variations, mood, skill, and willingness to provide service. I've had some lectures that are just dogs, horrible. Um, and I like dogs. Um, they just haven't been good. I've had a bad day. I've been off my game. Um, it, it changes. You can go to the same restaurant one, one week, you'll just get horrible service, a horrible meal. Um, things happen. People are different. Things are happening in their lives. Um, you know, family issues, stress at the moment for current situation. All of these things matter. But to overcome that, companies actually do stuff like you have a service delivery system. You set up a standardised process to eliminate. You've got to give McDonald's credit. They deliver consistently. The other thing is to manage the expectations of service. Right. What do you expect? I remember an international student, I was complaining I didn't get um, good service at $6 a, a plate uh, for noodles. And um, it was in Singapore and there was a lineup 
um, out the door of people getting this because the noodles were that good. And the student just looked at me and said, Elias, do you seriously expect service at $6 a plate? Go somewhere else, right? You're there to eat and get out. <laughs> it's a real reminder. Now, invest heavily in staff training. Well, that does make me laugh considering, uh, let's just say, the last four weeks I've learned a lot about online delivery. Uh, yes, train your staff. Go through, send them the courses. Uh, make sure they know what they're doing rather than saying, oh, here, go and do it. Um, selecting customers carefully. There are some customers you don't want, right? They give the example of bouncers not allowing drunks into bars, etc. I think we can all relate to that. All right, perishability. Well, you can't store a service. Read the definition, right? Here are a couple of uh, interesting highlights. Um, restrict demand. Again, guys, this is more of stuff that you'll get in your services marketing subject. Now, this is where it gets interesting, the extended services marketing mix. Now, we know it's intangible, you can't separate it, there's variety in the way it's delivered and it's perishable. Um, so what are the issues? Uh, how do you actually inspect or evaluate a product prior to consumption service? You don't know, you've got to go off the reviews and your generation and also your parents are getting really good at looking at customer reviews. Um, you know, there's going to be variability in service quality. It just happens. You can't store it. But these things um, are what you should look at. What are your strategies, right? Customer testimony, we're just trying to make sure that people, expectation, big thing. I, to give you an example, you hear, oh, it's the best movie, it's the best movie, it's the best movie. You go and say, it's crap. And you go, well, you got me all excited. It's all part of services marketing. Oh, this is the worst lecture you're ever going to go to. Oh, yeah, you're right, it was. It might have been a good lecture, but you're going in with a certain idea, a perception of what's going to happen, and that's what companies have to manage. Now, people, again, most service organisations claim their people are their most valuable asset and key to their success. It is. I mean, I've flown Virgin Atlantic and fantastic crews, um, really good. Um, I've flown with Cathay Pacific and it was one of the funniest, most relaxed trips I've ever had. Um, I'll never forget one of the um, guys serving brandy was in a bright aqua jumper, oh, not jumper, sports coat, two trays of brandy and not counting them, just handing them out to whoever wanted them. He was flamboyant, he was charming, it was a highlight of the trip. I would never hesitate to fly with him again. Um, really great, great experience. So again, yeah, you look at your people, you try to get good people. St. George as a bank has for years um, said how great it is. Um, and we were customers there. They didn't have the service, the, the processes to go with it, but their staff were brilliant to deal with. Now, what else do we have? Process. A good process which takes into account your customers' expectations helps, right? It anticipates what's wrong. A website, um, you know, booking systems, all of these things make life easier. What are your expectations? Uh, what is it supposed to be the functional side? And what do you expect, right? So again, now, I personally like physical evidence. This is how good does where you're getting the service delivered look? How good's a hairdressing salon? Um, how posh does the legal firm look? How great does the car dealership look good? Uh, you walk into a lawyer's office and it looks like, uh, you know, it, it's some stuff he's gotten from a recycling centre. You're going to go, this guy's not doing too well. Um, you know, with real estate agents, they always try to drive the flash car to convey success. So these clues look great. Uh, I think I told you the poorest I ever felt was across the road in Singapore on Orchard Road, looking at the Rolex building. It looked, the sun was on it, it looked like it was just gold dripping down. I've never felt poorer in my life. It was magnificent, right? It looked great. Now, I want you guys to read the net promoter scores because this is all about customer satisfaction, loyalty, and profitability. Um, it's a customer loyalty metric, which pretty much says, 
right? These guys like promoters are enthusiastic and loyal. You've heard me promote, um, you know, the Dapto Pie Shop, Steve's Burek, uh when it was open, Frank's Suva King in town. Um, great places to eat, great people. Um, again, I'm an advocate. That's the old way you would describe it. They're just measuring it. You've got passive customers, but they can be lured. Um, detractor customers always feel understanding that these guys, especially now with social media, can sit there and really give you a serve is uh, very, very interesting. And again, you can look here how these scores promote. Uh, my wife has had the most horrible interaction with Telstra you can imagine. Six hours of being on the phone, um, constantly explaining the situation. Um, again, this morning, a similar circumstance. Um, is about a returned um, phone, you know, went through JB Hi-Fi, JB Hi-Fi, out at Warrawong, best two group of people out. Yeah, absolutely, and no hesitation shopping there. Uh, they're awesome. So you look at and say, okay, where would I fit in as a net promoter score on this? Some industries by their nature get hammered more than others. All right, now what do we have? Now, total lifetime value of a promoter, you actually look at it and say, well, someone who's willing out there gets their opinion to other people, is a, it's, it adds to sales coming through the door. Um, I really like that as a concept. Now, what else have we got? Services marketing challenge. Now, this is really interesting. So, yeah, what do you do? I mean, you, how do you differentiate yourself in marketing services. Um, yeah, University of Wollongong, we're a smaller university, face-to-face, -face, we normally, you have far greater access. I know other universities, you have to hit a pin code on a pretty much a bulletproof door um, before you can access staff. Um, yeah, so we manage our differentiation, we try to promote it, what else? Developing profitable customer relationships, um, your professional services advisors manage their customers closely because people want to feel that they're important. They're spending a lot of money. They want to know that you actually care about them. Um, you know, consistent customer service quality. Guys, this is a key to success in a lot of areas. And I like this. These are definitions you need to look at. A search quality means that you can understand what it is very easily. Um, like an airline ticket, there's not a much of, much thought goes into it. You say, yeah, it's a book, it's a ticket, I know what it is. Yeah, how excited can I get over it? But experience qualities are where you actually go to it and feel it, feel the presence, and you're not quite sure what you're going to get when you're there. Um, yeah, you've got the credence qualities. Again, um, look at the diagram below, I like it. Providers trustworthiness, integrity, professionalism. Now, easy to evaluate. You can see clothing, jewelry, furniture, but yeah, services, legal services, car repairs, medical diagnosis, television, where there are specialist skills involved, it's harder for us to know. But I do see on Facebook, a lot of times you'll see people go, can someone recommend to me um, a, a good lawyer, plumber, etc." cetera. Um, they're seeking it from another consumer in their community to get that trustworthiness across. All right, um, now, four key issues. I like this. This could be a multiple choice question for sure. In delivering high levels of customer service, you need to consider issues. What do they expect, right? Um, you know, you establish service quality standards. What's the minimum we're going to provide you? Manage customer service expectations. Oh, sir, did you enjoy your trip? Yes. Was it what you expected? Um, did we meet everything? All of these things are just common sense most of the time. But measure employee service performance. Uh, it has always astounded me that at university, my boss cannot actually comment on my teaching evaluations. They've only been allowed to be used if I'm going for promotion. It's our core business. It, it stuns me to no end. Um, the university will evaluate the subject as a whole, but they can never um, look at your own individual teaching performance. They can look at our um, 
expectations, our research outputs, but it's different. But anyhow, look guys, I like this checklist on service quality. Uh, what do people want? Now, you've got reliability, responsiveness, assurance, confidence in the service provider. We're a world-class uh, five-star teaching and research university in the good uh, university's guide to good unis, whatever it's called. Empathy, we care. Um, you usually get responses from us um, and tangibles. What's the physical evidence? I mean, I've got to admit, Wollongong campus is spectacular. Um, I like it. And it's one of the key um, factors when students pick it from overseas, that we have a great reputation, a nice campus, close to a beach. All right, so service quality standards. Again, guys, we all know what good quality is. We've experienced it. Um, how do we manage it? Well, let's see. What, what's the zone of tolerance? What really... Well, I've put up uh, a few videos out of uh, a couple of classic comedies on what we probably consider very poor service quality. Uh, John Cleese and Faulty Towers. Have a look. Uh, look, again, we know how to do all this. So, look, this is a short chapter. A lot of it you know because you provide services, you experience services experience services as a beautiful little summary here learn your key terms here these are classic multiple choice questions um yeah when we had airlines flying you always get airline of the year awards um who provides the best service and so forth and this is a competitive edge this is what you can put on a positioning map so guys um that's it for services um enjoy again I expect a fair few multiple choice questions on the highlighted areas um, to come your way. See you later. Take care.